split push strategy and focus on those side lanes. But already bands coming out quick. Zach, Elise, Oriana already off the table. So obviously one of the things for Unicorns of Love is they don't really play Elise uh, a whole lot at least, so they often have to remove it instead of maybe threaten it as a potential first pick. I think it is a good ban though, because again, you don't want to have this enemy jungler that can just gank so early and really start snowballing, most likely Jensen in the mid lane. That's interesting because, uh, you know, you might not want to use it as your first ban, if, even if you are going to ban it on blue side and ha on the off chance that Cloud9 haven't, you know, researched that uh, you know, or haven't gone that in depth, uh, they, that would be a very common follow up as far as uh, red side bans there. I think the Unicorns are just respecting C9's research. It is the most banned champion by the Unicorns of Love as well in the <laughs> ULCS. Yeah, so it's kind of going on the, on the page. The first thing you see is Elise ban all the time. Okay. They probably don't play. Let's see what happens though. C9 are banning away the very standard uh, red side bans in Caitlyn and Zach, two of the absolute best champions in the role. Also happens to be two champions that Unicorns are a little bit very comfortable with, so doubling down on that power. Tristana now taken away from Cloudline, interesting enough, and that does leave open the first pick, Gragas, to come in either, either for Vizachachi or Cersei. Yeah, NA team's been super happy about, uh, you know, flexing the Gragas, but instant lock-in here for Jensen's oh. LeBlanc once again, and you would expect uh, another jungler that will have uh, I, early game I just Right off the bat, guys, is this just going to be all about mid lane again? Is this yes, every time yes. we see the LeBlanc, is that all it's going to be? C9 loves to play around mid, and now to get the best champion to play around. Well, it's just that her gank setup is so ridiculously good. She has her own dash and her own crowd control pre, you know, level six. So it, it is very easy. It is a very easy option. Uh, this time around, they're they're also drafting some split push here for Ray, yeah. which is something that they have done. Have to remember, it is technically a flex pick. Sneaky could take it as well in the bottom lane. We have seen that a few times. Um, I'm kind of surprised to see Kennen this early. Unicorns of Love, though, are coming in with a plan saying, we know you're going to pick the LeBlanc. That's why they're leaving it open. They get the Cassidy, which is actually the one champion Exile managed to play super passive on in the EULCS and not fall behind early. And then he actually managed to get to like the mid-game stage where he could really start being a carry for his team. And it was a good shade to see from him. Of course, now with the Thresh locked in as well for Hilla saying, though, it looks like comfort across the board for the Unicorns of Love is C9. Look at that last pick. And while Cassidy is, you know, a decent answer into LeBlanc, and a lot of people kind of have that in the back pocket for a long time as uh, this, you know, quote-unquote counter, mm -hmm. it's still abusable early. Uh, and especially if you have an attack damage early game jungler, uh, that was kind of the mouse over there from uh, Cloud9. They don't end up locking in, but they still have multiple options there. Could either be that Lee Sin, could be the Rek'Sai. Um, Cossacks. Uh, or the Cossacks. Like, there are many opportunities here for them to still go with that mid pressure if they want to. Yeah, there's always a big point in the pick and ban phase when you go into that second phase where if there's only two main picks left in your role, you often feel forced to pick one of them otherwise both are going to get removed. But when Kobe just mentioned three different junglers right there that are all fine choices, well, Cloud9 says we can wait. We can obviously still get one of the best ones even if Unicorns ban two junglers. Interesting to see two now. The Cloud9 are banning away 80 carries. Is this kind of maybe heralding Sneaky playing this cannon already or is it just trying to take away power picks from the hands of Samix? Could be both there. You know, a bit of mind games. Uh, Sneaky also very uh, willing to take that in the AD carry role. And Cloud9 could kind of do that divert attention, you know, sleight of hand here down to the bottom lane and actually just try and uh, do a little bit of a impression of Fnatic, maybe. <laughs> I mean, they could. Again, we have seen them do it before. Uh, Samax's champion is kind of interesting, uh, this split. Like, it's it's Caitlyn Twitch is number one and two, and then it's Zaya, and then one game of Kalista. Varus and Ash used to be pretty big picks for Unicorns of Love in the spring split, but they haven't touched those champions, which is a bit of a shame because I actually still feel like they are two of the absolute best AD carries, especially if you don't play around your bottom lane that much. So I would love to see one of those two come in from Samex to pack some more engage from that bottom side and some CC. And to Fisher, you bring that up, but with Exile struggling in the mid lane, it feels like Unicorns of Love have been all about putting that Twitch into the hands of Samex, these big late game scaling kind of hyper carry picks to make sure that they have one player to play around. This time though on the cast and it could be different. Yeah, and if you already have now massive scaling in mid, which means if you also go Twitch, well, then you most likely have multiple losing lanes in the early game against C9 with LeBlanc. Like, that doesn't sound like a good thing. We saw Fnatic try that yesterday. Exactly. The key is, yes, they, you know, Kassin is very good at scaling, but the wave clear is always the issue that is brought up with this champion you know, early on. And if Cloud9 do try and have one of those high pace games, mm -hmm. uh, then that is definitely going to be an area that they can't exploit. There's the Lee Sin that we kind of did expect, that attack damage early ganking jungler. 
Uh, so Contracts, you know, has those multiple options. So once again, looking at Samax, and I think Varus would fit that comp extremely well to add that wave clear Kobe just mentioned as well. But it also really depends what Samax feels comfortable playing at the moment. Nar is something we've seen more and more uh, locked in for the top lane. Does also confirm the Gragas will be going into the jungle. Nar into the hands of Vizichachi. One final pick for the 80 carry roll on the side of Unicorns of Love. Ash Varus, maybe the predicted what would make round out this draft well. Can't trust that, folks, if you haven't watched the Unicorns of Love. Always hovers a couple I, different Well, tables. I do definitely agree with the Fischio's earlier point about trying to get the, you know, wave mm. clear from the AD carry no, roll so that they can do the so classic swap game. bottom All right. up there, but not going to be the case. Oh. C9, they're going to take their time with this last pick, gentlemen, but I brought up Twitch. You doubted it, unfortunately. No, no, we, we said we didn't alone. want to see it. All right, well, you're seeing it now. The so talk to me. Zero, drink <laughs> one. Uh, <laughs> fucking <laughs> score, fine, fine. So talk to me about what this means now, because we do have it locked in. You said there was some weakness in wave clear. What does this mean for the team overall? I mean, it just means you have a comp that purely Ooh. relies on scaling. Okay, okay. Oh, okay. Riven okay. Riven okay. Riven Whoa. Riven Whoa. It. it doesn't matter anymore. Riven time. Kobe, oh go. my god, we have been waiting for Ray's Riven for so long in North America because he plays it all the time in solo queue. You know, he was rank one in North American solo queue, played a ton of this champion, and this is definitely we talk about keeping options open. It does not have to be a mid lane camp, boys. This is very, very easily uh, could snowball in his favor. Yeah, you look at both solo solo laners for C9 and contracts, like oh, no matter where you go almost at this point, you're like, yes, I'm so happy I got a kill for that guy yeah. because he can now take over the game. We know in the NAR matchups that when NAR's in mini NAR, he's so squishy and champions with mobility can get onto him and actually all in him, especially after level six. And we saw that proven yesterday when Vizichachi took the Aurelia up against it and just leapt on the haunts for every single chance he got. And the thing that uh, Riven has here, even over Aurelia, is the interrupt on NAR's hop. So many interrupts here from Riven uh, and the possibility of animation canceling it to get one of those definitely there. When Ray hits level six, you really oh, need yeah, to yeah, pay yeah. attention to this lane. Remember guys, it's the first time during the day. It's not about whether or not you love Unicorns of Love or Cloud9, it's about NA and EU. So head over to Twitter, at LO Esports, hashtag EU win, hashtag NA win. It's been a close and contested vote. We'll see if we find the same in this game. So you're getting ready for the first one of the day. And I want to go back to that Twitch just before we saw the Riven. Because that's the, kind of the problem now for Europe that we saw yesterday, where it's a lot of scaling and it's great when you get to like two or three items, you know, everyone is happy, everyone yeah. is celebrating. But getting to that point has proven very difficult against some of these North American teams. And Unicorns, they're banking fully on the late game and just saying we can stop C9 from snowballing. Gonna have to see if they can make it. Unicorns of Love, of course, on the blue side. C9 on the red. Riven ready to bring the Dawn. The NA already happy to see it. And looks like Unicorns of Love maybe trying something special here in the level one. All right. See if they, uh, you know, catch contracts, contracts sleeping or not. Should be expecting it, though. Gets a little sight there. Maybe it'll just be an invade. Five man strong, actually, for this uh, Raptor Ward. Well, if you are Unicorns of Love, you know that you have to try and follow contracts early on because level three lease in, either top lane or mid lane, can be so impactful for C9. Yeah. And while we all are super excited for the Riven pick, obviously, uh, very rare and exciting, uh, we do have to keep in mind, as DeVicio said, the scaling on Unicorns. And they do have, uh, you know, if Cloud9 mess up in this early game, if, yep. they, if they, you know, give over gold and if they're not able to snowball, uh, you know, off this early game, then you have to keep that in mind because the Cassidy, because of the Twitch, you know, a lot of late game scaling there, as well as the Gnar even, actually. And that's just always the thing, you know, when you call out the risk in a draft, then you get cursed as a caster. <laughs> Suddenly the enemy team feeds like four kills to the Twitch and Twitch carries the whole thing and you're just like, well, All I right. mean, I guess it worked, but we'll uh, C9. Fight over the Raptors. Who will get them? One for C9. Oh, oh like they're getting a for unicorn. Oh, no saying flash forward, exhaust on a smoothie. He's in trouble. This could very well be first blood. Remember yeah, when I said that it. thing about Twitch <laughs> thing getting random kills? Right, one to one to fish you. Yeah, one to that one. was a good <laughs> prediction right there. <laughs> Oh, they Not. just paused. Oh, I'm glad I, we slipped in that part about being cautious and uh, <laughs> giving over gold there yeah. for the scaling composition. Well, I guess Twitch was a great pick after all. All right, Genius. Gentlemen. Totally because of the Twitch pick that they got this kill. There we go. <laughs> Still had a mile away. They lost three Raptors, though. Look so at the worth smiles it. on their faces. Okay, not that face. <laughs> Classic. <laughs> He's focused. He's focused. Right, right, right. He's, He's like, please don't take away our first blood. It's actually Hillsang who paused the game. So we'll find out more context 
in a few he moments. He wants a real challenge. Start over. Yes. No first spot for Twitch. Yeah, yeah. All right, GG, guys, go next. We definitely win this one. <laughs> well, Unicorns Allowed, they started off well. We talked about the late game scaling composition. The other thing we brought up in Champion Select was the focus around mid lane. But I feel like now, with a Ken and Braum bottom lane and a Riven in the top lane for C9, it feels to me like contracts could just go anywhere. Exactly. Like, early game, I think it's easier for him to go around, you know, mid lane with LeBlanc or maybe the Riven top. But after you hit level 6 on Kennen and you get his ulti, that's why we see Fnatic always play around the Kennen lane. Same can happen here from contracts. We know Jensen is running teleport on LeBlanc. Like, that's kind of the thing Smoothie and C9 showed yesterday. And Smoothie talked about this in an interview with Kelsey Mose as well. Like, once you get an advantage with these roaming champions, Playing the game just gets it gets so easy because you can just go everywhere on the map with globals. Yeah, it is interesting because like for especially for Cloud 9s composition, uh, I mean I would if they're able to have an opportunity, like if an opportunity comes up in the bottom lane where they can use their teleports and, and get a counter and, and get some extra kills there, then I would say definitely go for it. But I don't think that would be the main game plan, especially for a, a Riven, right? Trying to keep her isolated, trying to keep her in the one uh, versus one up on the top side, you know, with a little bit of jungle pressure and get her off to the snowballing. And I hate to interrupt, gentlemen, but we do have more context on the pause. Hill is saying had experienced some lag issues. So league officials will be swapping out his computer before we resume the game. So just a few moments. We know what the issue is. Now working on a solution. So in the meantime, we can just keep our focus back on that draft. Yeah, just remember, guys, at home, it doesn't work for you. If you lack, no one comes in and switches out your PC. It's only for the pro players on the big stage. But I think also... I can't call up the Fischio. You, you can call <laughs> hey, up bud. me. You can definitely call me up. And I, re I won't really fly over and swap out your PC, though. <laughs> OK. Just oh, listen will to I? me cry. Try. <laughs> Try next time you lag at home. <laughs> the Deficio tech support? You know nothing about computers, Deficio. I can probably swap out a PC <laughs> pretty easily. <laughs> cables out, cables in. All right, well, we'll see. Well, gentlemen, we do have a replay of First Blood waiting for us. Let's take a chance to look at it. And we walk it's me through the, the, the level one. The level one, okay, I understand. Take then take the right. I wasn't mean, like, let's talk about the thought process here for well, C9. The, the big thing here is that Unicorns of Love duo lane is sitting here protecting and waiting for this. And the immediate collapse is so easy for them. So I was watching C9 versus TSM in week five. And C9 were actually sitting in that brush looking for that Raptor play uh, as well. They didn't actually go fully all in like we saw here against TSM. But one of the reasons also, a lot of teams like to do the, the, the leash on red buff, where you try and like, you do a few Raptors, you do all the small Raptors yep. into a quick red buff, and Super. then you go to top side and you try and gank the enemy top laner. And you can obviously do that against the river uh, fairly easily. So having that uh, dual lane sitting there from C9 is also to try and prevent the Gragas getting all the small Raptors and red buff into a quick level three after another camp. Uh, they also got three of the Raptors, so technically they succeeded in denying the experience early. They didn't it's obviously uh, all in. They yeah. didn't expect. They didn't expect the unicorns of love bot lane to be there. I think that was a big surprise for them. The risk reward may not have gone in Cloud9 through this time, but you brought up a good point. Going for a slightly greedier jungle start means it is a little more vulnerable to that interruption from C9. It is. It is. We have actually seen a curious amount of mistakes around the Raptors early. You know, ever since the Raptor pit became so important as this, you know, number one jungle camp to start over, we've seen top laners go to try and stop Raptors and steal some away and get, you know, tunnel vision basically mm -hmm, takes mm -hmm. over. They stick around for one, they stick around for two, and then they, you know, get collapsed upon by the enemy who's going to have bigger numbers be simply because they're on the enemy jungle side and you're not bringing your jungle. So uh, it's actually quite curious that we see this so often and uh, teams continue to get collapsed upon. Also, just because in this invade, uh, not a single ward was actually placed by C9 beforehand. So normally if you want to make these kind of moves where you're denying camps, you have like one or two wards there just to see, you know, is anyone around, but not in this case. Well, we're going to have to see what comes next as we are now getting back into game. Hill is saying he needed a moment to adjust his settings, but now we're off. It'll be interesting to see exactly what now the options are that come in. Of course, contracts not interrupted. <laughs> just in case you forgot. <laughs> if you're just joining us, Smoothie died. Uh, other than that, you haven't missed much. Contracts going for an aggressive invade, though. So obviously, with him dying, not great. But at the same time, they actually did slow down this start from Unicorns of Love's jungler. You can see the Gragas didn't get yes. all the Raptors. I like it. You know, now he you finally got, got his red buff. goggles on. What is this? There we go. C9 Deficio. <laughs> it is unbiased Deficio, <laughs> which is my goal for Rift Rivals. <laughs> Took me five minutes yesterday to break that, but Ray's going nuts. 
Yeah, the other thing, though, you do kind of touch on a good point here. Uh, De Fizio, thank you, thank you. We, yeah, yeah. Uh, quite rare for you. Uh, <laughs> uh, honestly, though, uh, Contract's going in to steal this blue quadrant of the jungle. Uh, this is something, as a jungler, when you have a top lane that you do want to isolate and you do want to, you know, get snowballing and try and take advantage of a one versus one, you take out the jungle camps on that side of the map. So if Zerze actually wanted to spend his time ganking top lane, he would have to give up so many camps and so much efficiency uh, you know, by counter jungling and basically trading sides of the jungle, you Ooh, eliminate that dive mid Kobe, they might oh. dive here. Not about the top one right now, but the mid lane contracts goes in, gets a bit aggressive, oh. throws it in. Flash forward, first blood, three minutes in. Exile already going to drop. Right. Second Look at blood, the river, because there's a possibility that maybe Zerze can get a flash or something. Okay, we're reaching a little bit here. He got one. Hey. Oh, he got one. Hey. That's respect. As I said, <laughs> This whole setup, though, is so small, actually, from C9, because after Contract steals the topside jungle, they had a ward already placed on their own blue buff, so they saw Xerxes went in there to take that blue buff, so they know there's no one defending Castle in the mid lane, and that's why Contracts can go for this early dive. Exactly, and again, this is made possible because of the LeBlanc pushing in. We talked about Cassidy can still be exploited early on in this matchup. And he does just that. So Cloud9, again, off to that mid lane start here for Jensen. And Contracts going to stick to the game plan here. Use some extra wards around mid lane to continue the pressure. I like Jensen getting early control ward. Put a bit more pressure there. No flash from Exile, which of course is the cast of the Nightmare pre-level 6. And you can't really do a whole lot as Exile here. I think it, maybe if you flash the Lee Sin Q, he can't obviously then follow up and get even extra damage onto you. But... He was kind of stuck on the tower at the same time, and it was very, very short travel time. So really tough spot to be in when your jungler is obviously not nearby. And yesterday we saw two completely different forms of Cloud9. The LeBlanc playing around the mid game, powerhouse in the early game Cloud9, and kind of the scale for late Cloud9. It looks like the second one is showing up today, gentlemen. Definitely true. As we said, you know, a lot of that did have to do with the team compositions that they drafted in those two games as well. You know, pushing lanes, allowing contracts to make early moves. Um, you know, maybe Smoothie dying wasn't part of the plan, but in the end, they are able to kind of right the ship and actually turn that gold, read, gold lead back around for themselves because of the large CS that is currently in Cloud9's favor. There are a lot of extra minions, though, for Unicorns to pick up. And obviously, if uh, Jensen ends up going, you know, 10-0 on LeBlanc, a bit like yesterday, everyone will be saying, why would you not just ban LeBlanc? Why would you ban Orianna instead of it? The reason Unicorns did it here was for that Cassidy counter pick, the game plan. Yeah. You can then argue if that's a good one or not. But then Hillisang taking some damage. Two stacks, four stacks, because of blows. Moving forward, Hillisang going to do his best. CC now coming back as Samix tries to throw it out in the autos, but the Twitch just doesn't have the damage to trade effectively. You have to remember their first buff from Twitch happened pretty late before minion spawn, so like he got the kill, he had to walk straight to bottom lane, so he didn't actually go back and you know gain any sort of advantage from it, or to maybe a slight experience lead, and that's it. So right now he's not really using that early gold to try and win the lane a bit harder. So Sneaky is doing more than fine bot lane. And we look at it now, you can see Sneaky, actually pretty incredible cannon player himself. Hard to compare him to Reckless, admittedly, as a European caster, but has had some impressive numbers and is dominating that lane. I like the adaptation here already from Unicorns. Uh, they call over Xerxes to the mid lane so early to help out with the push for Exile, because they need to get Kassadin at least to the level six. Otherwise, Jensen will continue to zone him out in that lane. Meanwhile, bottom lane, Smoothie goes in for another trade. Oh, Exile. Exile. Nowhere to go, no options left. Just gonna let the Sonic Wave Even connect. With Jensen there. Gets it. Are you kidding so me? What happened right there was as soon as we panned the camera away, Exile actually decided to walk up and place a ward across the little wall there near the mid lane. You can see the blue ward just on the contracts on the minimap. Completely unnecessary because you're about to push out anyway and then go back. Yeah, completely unnecessary. And they have vision of both Cloud9 They saw him go down to the bottom lane. Okay, I, I came into today like feeling bad for this guy, right? Because he's probably going to get a lot of flame. But man, this is... This is super rough. All right, so as we said, they call over the jungle to help push up the lane. They don't actually fully push it out. And then, as you said, he's over there in the middle of the lane. Nice collapse from C9. And uh, that's going to be another face palm. So going back to champ select, uh, as we said, you know, the Kassadin, OK, we get it, counter pick. It's risky. You need, you need some early game elsewhere. Then the Twitch come in, okay, it makes it harder Level as well. Six, Ray. Yeah, they have to hold on to that thought. Fisher looks like we're gonna have the 2v2 on the top side. Ray moving forward, just looking to find the execute. Oh, Where is he gonna throw it out? 
Looking for one. Cersei's still running, waiting on that sonic wave. He is flash. There's the kick. Doesn't even need it. Leap forward, gets the auto, contracts on a roll. Luckily for Vizichachi, he was able to flash out of the ultimate there from Ray, and at least he survives. But again, that Cloud9 duo does claim single kill for themselves. And it's looking a lot like the game yesterday, C9 versus Fnatic, where these lanes here are suddenly getting early advantages. You got an assist for Riven. You got a kill and assist for LeBlanc, and obviously Contract's doing really well on Lee Sin. And as we talked about earlier, no reason to really go bot lane uh, before this cannon is even hit level 6, or maybe not even a reason to go bot lane now, because your solo laners are already winning. Just keep snowballing them. And it's not like you're scared of the Twitch. Level 5, no items under his belt. He's waiting for at least an Infinity Edge before he can solo carry some team fights, and it's well far away. All right, just as we set up there, Riven taking advantage of the mini form here on Nar. That level six, he has the burst, goes in for the flash, he gets the knock up for the interrupt, but the ultimate was going backwards there, and Vizichachi able to flash out. I think what we're seeing uh, here at Rift Rivals is a really good thing about the Nar buffs. Because it makes people now confident they can blind pick Gnar. And it actually opens up so many different top lane matchups. We saw Aurelia yesterday, we're seeing Riven right now. Just because, like, Gnar, he's kind of the, the jack of all trades, but the master of none. He doesn't really destroy any lanes in the early game. You can actually pick a lot of melee champions that can farm okay against him, and then just look for all in. He becomes the master of trades when he gets a frozen mallet, and he has a range versus melee matchup later in the game. Later. With Black Cleaver, and so he's if he started with that. If we just started with that eye too. Yeah, exactly. That's the key. <laughs> Should we make a list of Fisher of champions that would be really good if they could start with Black Cleaver and Frozen Mallet? <laughs> I think most champions, even even champions won't normally get it. If they can just Surat. start with that item. All right, I bet uh, Exile was wishing he could start with any extra items there in the mid lane. He continues to get bullied by Jensen. Rome here up to the Chachi. top side, though. Go back, Chain CC comes in. He's going to get locked up. No chance for the Ribbon to shield up. That's going to be difficult, but Exile now trying to run out. Contract's caught under tower. That's bad news, but Smoothie, he's straight one back. Now he's in the Unbreakable. Back and out, but that's going to be the end of the play. Yeah, Jensen should be able to get, get him out, but they got a counter kill. That is huge for Unicorns. Moving that top side, they're also going to get first turret gold. Such a good lane swap here from Unicorns of Love. We were kind of waiting for Samux to go back to base, spend some of that gold, and instantly he just walks to top lane with Hillisang. Surprising Ray here. And so that's going to be tower for Unicorns. Kills in the mid lane as well. Two kills now on this Twitch. Really, really smart by Unicorns, as you said. Staying proactive, not sitting back and, you know, letting these losing lanes get out of control. Uh, swapping very early to get this trade in. C9 actually not even able to get the other half of that trade, so no turret gold coming in yet. Yeah, it's actually insane how massive that play was for the Unicorns of all, because they were losing these solo lanes here. They couldn't stop the Lee Sin. And now they even out the gold by also getting that tower. Exile is very early down in a side lane. He's waiting for Hillisang to come and help him as well. Been rough for Exile. Now he has to back off. But he's reasonably safe now that he's past that level 6 point. Now that he doesn't have to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the LeBlanc. Unicorns have taken him out of that mid lane, and it looks like it will be easier for him to survive. I also want to highlight the kind of other play that was going on during that one, where Xersei did go to Exile's lane, and they're kind of using this super weak Cassidy as, well, we know he's going to probably die, or they're going to die of him, uh, but at least we have someone around to get this counter kill. See, Xersei in the mid lane, he's waiting around for this dive. He gets the inner up and he gets the counter kill on contracts even though smoothie is there you know once again for the three man gank on mid lane and it's uh, it's all about unicorns turning that into a one for one trade where you know Cassidy going down not as big of a deal all right now exile is trying to do everything he can to stay in the game you know maxing out his item build with very cheap items coming in double dark seal for extra region with his corruption potion catalyst completed so not a lot of damage on him but he's just trying to stay in lane he's trying to stay somewhat healthy so he doesn't just get killed one v one by Jensen. Uh, Xerxes bottom lane right now, so is Jensen. A lot of players looking for a potential fight. And Exile may be trying to stay in lane, but Jensen Run! has no problem just walking away. Now walking right back. Lay down a bit of damage. Triple chain coming in. Exile just taking the bad end of that trade, but really no options up against LeBlanc, who's already one kill in. And C9, they're just going to take that courtesy cloud break. As soon as we uh, went back to the standard lane, C9 pushed in mid, pushed in bot lane. That opened up for an, a very easy Drake. Unicorns of Love. Got all the gold through just that lane swap, not standard laning. Yeah, definitely big for them. Uh, for Cloud9, though, with their composition, let's set up the, the transition that they want to get next in this game. And that will be, hey, Jensen is about to finish his Gunblade. They can actually put LeBlanc in a side lane. He has teleport. Uh, and with this massive gold lead, he'll be you know, difficult to answer because uh, the Cassadin still does take a bit more time to scale up. 
and uh, they want to create those multiple points. Top lane right now, uh, and Bartland fighting oh, as well. Not. Hook goes in, out's gonna come the ultimate from Samix, but immediately the exhaust in response, Sneaky doing what he can to dish damage onto Hillisang, but no kill gonna drop on either side. And we also saw top lane right there, Contracts went in on Visichachi. Moving forward. Playing forward it safe. Half. So like, they would have a lot of burst damage actually against the half HP Lee since Everyone from C9 backs away, bot lane as well, no one actually died. But all C9-1's bot lane is that tower. It's fairly low, sh and we see Sneaky constantly pushing it in. And we know the Twitch doesn't really have any wave clear options here to clear this one out. Rad's hat tat, or rather Spray and Prey, already used. Be in trouble. Looks like it will just get taken down, trying to get as much damage on a Sneaky as possible. But luckily the Venom cast helped him clear out, or at least dissuade any further aggression. Smoothly! That's a rough one. Definitely did not want to burn heal. Miscalculation there from the Cloud9 support. I want to take a step back to your point as well, uh, Kobe. Just as I say, Sneaky almost uh, went for a fight here, but about, you know, playing with LeBlanc in the side lane. Mm -hmm. Fnatic likes to keep LeBlanc in the mid lane because she can push the lane so quickly and then roam and then have Sneaky split push, split push. But we see a bot lane oh. fight. Sees the Lee Sin come and uses him as an escape path, but Hillsang may still be in trouble because he gets kicked out. He gets knocked down and contracts. Just on an absolute tear. Chachi using that TP as well down bottom lane, trying to help, but just a little bit. Too late, honestly, impossible for him to do anything because Hillisang died so quickly. And that's a kill and TP advantage now for C9. They are still in a very good spot despite losing that first tower. When we look at this one again, you can see Hillisang doing what he can to escape, but really just too far forward, caught out yet again. Not just an issue that's been plaguing Exile across this tournament, but also Hillisang as well. And sadly, Mr. Chachi shows up. There's nothing left for him to do. Plus, always feels nice as Lee Sin when you get to create your own escape path there, knocking Hillisang up the lane and using the second Q. So nobody was left around for the teleport you know, when Vizichachi came in. And that does give teleport one teleport advantage over to Cloud9, even though there are four to keep track of in this game. Definitely an immense amount of potential global pressure. Hillisang continuing to roam around, plays down a bit of vision, has left the bottom lane. And we have swapped now Vizichachi to the bottom side, left alone to hold that tower. but. Cloud9 not too concerned. No, and at this point, Sneaky is sitting on 2,400 gold. He just wants enough to go back and get the fully completed blade. And then, as we talked about before here, like, if you are C9, you actually have, like, three split pushers. Technically, you to carry your mid lane and your top lane. They all want to sit in side lanes to split push. There's only two side lanes, sadly, for them. So they need one guy in the mid lane. And if they want the wave clear, it's LeBlanc. If they want to move their strongest member to the side lane, well, then they have to put Sneaky mid lane. And he's Kind of to sit there and hold down the fort for as long as possible. All right, well, the first turret does fall, so that game plan starts to come a little bit closer. Ray has to flash the hook. Not going to find the engage opportunity. Exile continues to be under pressure. Luckily, the mobility is keeping him safe for now. They're not finding any greater advantages here. Both teams poking at each other, looking for openings, looking for opportunities to find those kills, but nothing coming up yet. Kind of just waiting right now for C9 to try and either set up the split push or Unicorns to try and look for that all-in engage. Very mobile LeBlanc in the mid lane. She's hard to catch, also with the flash available. And now with that bot lane tower down, obviously C9 doesn't need to keep Sneaky sitting in that lane and they can actually start moving people around the map. And it's truly at that point where it gets really, really hard for Unicorns to defend because every single lane is just getting pushed. Yeah. But they do have hard engage on Xerxes that they can use. That's the key, though. Uh, you know, right currently they had Kennen and LeBlanc both in the mid lane. That's the only option that you don't want. Yeah, that's a no-no. At no. least send one of them over the side lane. Now it's Sneaky who's going to head up to the top oh. side. Jensen says mid lane is still mine. Here come Unicorns, though. They want to make it theirs. Trying to push in, have the cannon wave as well. as Xerxes not going to get interrupted on the channel. That means the Herald's going to show up. This will be a tower for Unicorns of Love. And I think the Cloud9 should stick to the split. They don't want to answer 5v5 at the moment. Uh, NAR definitely brings a lot of AoE to the team fight, and they're actually just going to keep Kennen and Riven split pushing on the side lanes, give up that mid lane to the Rift Herald, and take him down before he can get two. And with a full wave on the top side, it very well may be the one for one tower trade, but Contracts, he's uh -oh. looking for the one for one. Exile, that's going to be the mistake he can't afford to make. Ooh, just barely enough range on the Rift Watch to take him to safety, but in the end, it is the one-for-one one tower trade, and now maybe a bit more of a fight as Hillisang wants to get this one started. TP comes in on the backside, Smoothie. He's gonna knock up two, but the fight has stalled at least for a moment. Samix running for his life, but that is not what you want to face. Jensen's LeBlanc, the heal, gonna keep him alive. Hillisang gonna flash to safety, but C9 taking advantage. Everyone's staying alive from the Unicorns of Love, but losing so many summoners. Chachi's looking for that bot lane tower. Ray with TP in case he wants to go back and defend it. 
Yeah, that was actually a tremendous amount of flashes blown there with Samix, both of his summoner spells uh, expended in the trade. But nobody commits to that mid turret either for Cloud9, so they'll probably get back in just defend instead. I think C9 were just happy to take a fight where, yes, you didn't get any kills, but you got these summoner spells. That now means the next few minutes, your pick composition with the insane amount of mobility should be able to get a kill when you catch just one guy. Yeah, the one thing that I would say, though, uh, they got the Twitch flash uh, from Samix out earlier, and Jensen decided to flash in to try and get the kill on top of it. You know, maybe LeBlanc flash for, for heal on top of the flash there. Uh, starts to get into debatable uh, territory, but being able to judge how much damage Jensen is going to do in his combo to Samix right. is definitely important for uh, the next time. And obviously also Jensen saying, you know what, I do have my distortion in case I need to find that Twitch once again. And I think if you are C9, like, you're kind of looking at just Samix right now as the man you need to kill in the next few fights, because Kassadin is still not really at the point where he's too scary and too hard to deal with. It really is that Twitch that opens up with ulti, especially once you get rank two, which is in just a few minutes for Samex, and then he's the man you're looking for in the fights. Have to be careful, have to respect the Twitch. We've seen so many teams in the ULCS fall prey to this champion. When left forgotten in the back lines of a team fight when he gets to reappear and dish out so much damage. But Cloud9, we talked about it earlier, they're playing against the clock of Unicorns of Love to a certain degree. They're all about the early game, and eventually the Twitch and the Cassadin do feel like these picks that are gonna become unstoppable. So I want to see what Sneak is able to do on Kennen right now. Uh, it is a little bit harder for him to just blindly push his lane out, simply because there is no, like, Shen ulti or Gali ulti to assist him in a quick 1v1 against something like a Kassadin. That's also why Sneak is kind of respecting Exile a little bit, but he can still try and one-on-one -on -one him. Yeah, you got to chase him down a bit here. Use the blade active. Leaping forward. Stun does drop. Half health for Exile. Smoothie on the way. A lot more than Smoothie are on the way, though. Oh. Unicorns of Love are sending four members up to the top side. Hillisang moving forward, gonna launch the play backward, but Xerxes not even worried about the support. He's hunting for the 80 carry. Smoothie already set to die. Exile gonna grab that kill. Suddenly, it's the flash out from Sneaky, the leap forward from Vizachachi, the wallop, the stun, the gnar back, and now Sneaky's in no man's land. He's gonna get so dropped. So once again, they kind of use their weak cast in here as a little bit of bait, and Unicorns go prey on Cloud9, trying to overextend and kill Exile. Meanwhile, Cloud9 will get the push on the mid lane to get some turret pressure here, but uh, some kills over to Unicorns. They're very happy about those. Yeah, everyone just going straight to that top lane looking for the fight. It's what we see from the Unicorns in Europe so often. Whenever someone is about to get caught, the entire team reacts very quickly. They're going straight for Baron in 20 minutes. Baron on the table. Exile gets his first kill of the tournament, and that means it's, it's so time risky. to go. Unicorns of love, not afraid here, but have to respect the LeBlanc. The ribbon, they go they the wall. Contracts is taken down, but Samix is alone in the pit. Suddenly, the team is there to back him up. Lantern brings the team in. 3K, getting lower. Twitch, Max, Expunge Dax. Who can stop the Baron on the side of Cloud9? There's low health bars. Can they get it moving in from right the exhaust? It goes down. Baron in the favor of C9, but the fight is breaking out, and suddenly it's disaster for the American team. Unicorns, man. Kobe, are you seeing this? That's huge for the Unicorns. Cloud9 are still trying to stop Bax, though. Oh, it's not over. Chachi. Just going to Goomba stomp his way over. Jensen trying to find a way out. Sneaky in trouble. The Kennen. Dishing out what damage he can. The Kakasa Blow not going to complete, and Unicorns Love pulling into the lead. The scaling comp that was behind, it was looking so bad for Unicorns. They first have that lane swap where they get some gold. Then suddenly now, you get a fight in the top lane against Sneaky and Smoothie. Two kills into a 20-minute Baron start. The catch on the contracts here is fantastic, but they're still sitting there behind the Baron in the pit, taking so much damage with so many guys from C9 just outside. The fact they get Ray down without Jensen being able to kind of join. C9 here didn't really coordinate their engage. Jensen now jumps in after the rest of the team is already engaged. And C9 just not able to get more than one guy down. Yeah, Unicorns were a bit too healthy after taking down both Sneaky and Smoothie there. So they were able to tank up Baron without too much threat. Uh, and the exhaust also used to just ensure that there's no extra burst coming through. Uh, to kill those members off inside the pit. Definitely huge for Unicorns of Love. With this Baron buff, we're going to have to watch that Baron power play. And not just that, but the items coming in. The Frozen Mouth, the Black Cleaver you talked about earlier, Kobe. Rod of Ages, almost a Lich Bane for Exile. Two items completed for the Twitch. Suddenly, the scaling comp is online. Yeah, Kassadin hit level 13 right now as well. So that despite him dying three times early, well, at this point, it doesn't really matter for him because he's going to be strong. So Unicorns of Love, they didn't manage to do this yesterday. They couldn't get back from these disadvantages in the early game. But with this 
massive play around Baron in the lane swap earlier. They've made two great plays that have actually resulted in them now being just slightly ahead of C9 in terms of the comp, but they're looking for a kill mid. Forward sneaky in trouble, just gets deleted. Unicorn's now moving down the mid lane. Cloud9 are gonna have to back off here. No hope to hold on to this tower. Jensen a little aggressive forward. That's the hook on Array the fight. They just want to keep going, but Unicorn's alive. They need to back off. No one gonna get hit by that ultimate. They're knocked back into the fight. Xerxe with a clutch cask. And now Vizachachi may be a bit too far forward, but Unicorn's alive, unconcerned. 23 minutes into the game, Unicorns are gonna be able to take down an inhibitor turret, probably the inhibitor as well with this Baron buff absolutely smashing now. Moving for more, Hill with Sanctorn and hooks left and right. When they connect, they are death sentences indeed. And Cloud9, they started so strong, but Unicorns of Love, they find that opportunity. Two times, Cloud9 try and kill uh, Exile in the mid game there. Two times. Unicorns in there fishing with him, Master Bait. Come on. Come on, C9. You understand, guys. Day one, it was all a bait. <laughs> oh, moving forward. Sneaking now in trouble, but Unicorns of Love gonna have to give a little bit more respect because Jensen not deterred. The heel comes in to try to keep the Vizichachi healthy. Now Samix on a killing spree, getting hit up by the tower. The knock comes in. Smoothie gonna drop as well. And now another tower in yep. their sights. And now everything is just in favor of the Unicorns of Love. So quickly did, did the game just change. Now all these late game carries, they're getting items. They have the Baron buff still. They're pushing for a second in here, but 23 minutes. And might I say, I am very glad to see that Xerse, you know, did go the Cinderholt Gragas route. Super That's tanky. That's why they're winning. Super tanky front line. Uh, I just want to divert the attention. <laughs> <into this issue. laughs> super tanky front line with the rush on the Righteous Glory. The engage was so easy there with that huge speed and the flash that comes from Gragas here. Righteous Glory is used. Sneaky, there's no chance. Doesn't even see it coming. Zooms in there and able to get the engagement. Then Hillisane comes up with another pick here. He gets. Uh, Flay and the hook oh. in the opposite direction. Ray does not see it coming. Able to start this one off. Then once oh. again, Gragas ultimate here. And Zerse, this guy, one of the young talents here in Europe. Really, really impressive. And we've just seen Gragas as well be such a power pick in the pick and ban phase. Like we've seen first rotation almost every time on red side. This was first picked by the Unicorns of Love. It was first picked by a lot of the North American teams too, but I was so surprised uh, you know, day one on this patch where the, the North American teams were still building Runic Echoes rather than Cinder Hulk to get super tanky very early and you get this continued bonus health, uh, extra additive value there from the item. Regardless though, <laughs> you know, front line strong, back line strong, everything strong for Unicorns. They have two inhibitors down yeah, yeah. 25 minutes into the game, so this should be a pretty easy full steam ahead straight up the bottom lane. 6k Bauer, Baron power play says it all, Kobe. Now looking for a little bit more. Hook does go down on a smoothie, but Unicorns are left. Holding off on pulling the trigger for now. Waiting for C9 to overextend. Hook goes in just over and over again for Hillisang and Pressure coming in. Not a lot of options left for C9, gentlemen. Let's be honest. Yep. At this point, uh, C9, if they're just even close to Zerg Z, they might get instantly engaged on. Exile as well can constantly jump on them. And Hillisang's just been uh, fishing with the hooks. Landing quite a few here to set up more kills for them. That one slightly missing contracts, but it's fine. You got some CDR, you can just go for more. Just cannot afford to approach the Meganar whatsoever. On top of that, the Thresh, so many engage options for the Unicorns of Love. They made it past that weak early game. Even with Cloud9 finding advantages, finding kills, simply not enough. And now it's contracts caught out yet again. They're running forward, they're taking their time. They're gonna take him down. Unicorns of Love walking it down the mid lane. This is the last hole, the last bastion for Cloud9. Let's see what they can do here. Samix stealth up, Jensen leaping forward. Luckily saved out, but Exile just playing so aggressive. Towers dropping left and right. And with that, Unicorns and Europe waste no time in striking back. Oh. Here goes Cloud9, though. Ray leaping forward, the last dance. Can they make it happen? Ray trying to get as much damage as possible, but he's not going to get a single member of the Unicorns of Love. Visit Chachi leaping in. They want a few extra kills. They want to savor the moment, Kobe, because it may have been an 0-2 start yesterday, but Unicorns of Love are not going to let it be 0-3 as they find their first win. What a quick game all of a sudden. <laughs> it was like, hey, man, that's a lot of scaling on your side. Unicorns love that Twitch pick with the Cassidy. That is super risky against a team running LeBlanc, Lee Sin, Rivern, a team that completely stomped Fnatic yesterday in the early game. 
And there were some of those moments. We, we were a little bit scared. <laughs> the European Cup was a little bit scared. The, the, the yeah. moment where Exile died at three minutes. Yeah, that yeah. Was, that was, we were terrified. You know, we're like, okay, well, it's just, this is every game. This is falling apart. As, no. as, we, as we said, though, you know, with these compositions, the Cloud9 one is one that has to keep up the pressure. And it is, once you start to crumble, once you give up a, a large amount of kills plus the Baron, you know, this, this composition oh, yeah, folds yeah. very, very quickly here. I don't know, what was your guys saying or your, your rule that no one in Europe can play uh, AD Cannon except for Reckless? Well, we so are true. We're in Europe. Europe. <laughs> don't want to put too much blame here uh, on any specific pick on the side of C9, but I, I just think the lane swap that happened much earlier with Samex going top lane with Healer Sank, they got a kill, they got first tower. Actually, even out the goal, despite them being down in kills, and they kind of kept that going until we also saw that play with Sneak in the top lane where he was chasing down Exile, the bait, he dies. 20 minute Baron was executed by a Unicorn. That was beautiful. Yeah, and again, I just really wanna, you know, highlight Xersei in this one on his Gragas. He, the adaptations he made, you know, he was hovering around the cast where he thought the Cloud9 were going to pressure. He got off multiple counter ganks. He was a, able to get off multiple good engages as well. Definitely impressive turnaround for these guys. Yeah, backing up his mid laner as well. The first game where Exile is going to find some kills and a huge impact once he's able to get off the ground. May have still been a weak point in that early game, but really, if they can keep playing around him like that, if they can punish these teams who are like, hey, this is your weak link, maybe Unicorns of Love can keep getting those wins. I mean, that's, that's the kind of scary thing about a game like this because so key moments, or so, like, two really key moments here just kind of saved the entire thing for Unicorns and made them look super good against C9. But the draft in itself is still extremely hard to play and extremely risky. I, I think the, ah. I think the Gragas first pick, though, that's a key one for Xerxes, and I wonder if other teams are going to be like, okay, we're going to make sure Xerxes does not get that Gragas because he was so impactful on it. Yeah, one of the things that, with that guy, though, he just plays so many champions. He uh, does play a lot of champions. one of the things I love about him. He's either making plays or he's farming in the jungle, but either way, he's always, he always feels like Xerxes is the man who's showing up so consistently. Well, Unicorns of Love started their second day with a win. Quickshot is standing by with that victorious top laner. Thank you very much, gentlemen. I am joined by Visit Chachi, and what a game to start the day. Um, why did it look so easy? Um, well, yesterday we went home after the sour defeat of uh, two games, and uh, we had like a two-hour talk with the team. And I think that had really positive impact on everyone. And we came in like really fired up today to like prove that we are actually not that bad. Did you prove you were not that bad in this one game? I believe so. How does it feel after such a victory? You sat down, you've got this energy. And when I look at the team, Sheepy, huge smiles, the rest of the squad, big smiles. So what does that mean to you to have such a convincing win to start day two? It means a lot and it gives us more like confidence for the upcoming series which we especially need against TSM since yesterday, I think we lost in like 27 minutes and today we won in 26. So that's like kind of promising for us, I believe. <laughs> Pr pretty big progress, Visit yes. <laughs> I've only got time for one more question. So I want to know with all three EU teams losing games yesterday, which one will represent Europe in the finals on Saturday? Mm, I would love to say us, but I think the highest chance is probably for Fnatic since they are like the most consistent out of all three of us. Well, there we go. Fnatic will see if they can. Uh, you guys do have that rematch at TSM later today. Good luck for that one, Thank Chachi. Uh, we're going to head over to the analyst desk to round out the game. <laughs> Thank you very much, guys. Nice to hear from Visit Chachi. Nice to hear that they are back on uh, on the horse, on the unicorn, so to say, that they have found their very first win. And you guys wanted to take a look at picks and bans. Uh, Deficio was talking about the Gragas first pick that might get picked away, whatever, but you guys just didn't like the C9 draft that much. Well, it was really risky, right? And they needed to snowball every lane really hard, because if you think of the cohesion of the team composition in a late game, yeah, Riven and LeBlanc can be scary champions on their own because they can both snowball the game. But if you don't snowball super hard, you're pretty useless. And then when they didn't snowball hard, we got to see UOL skill. So, I mean, it's risky in both sides because mm -hmm. you can't snowball over, but uh, we got to see the bad side of the risky comp. Yeah, and the snowball becomes really hard because a lot of this game is about pushing waves and doing something with that wave. And this composition, they have no one that can really push a wave. So the really only option was to eventually like build up a wave and then go for a dive. And then this all got really screwed up when you all did that like turret dive or uh, lane swap, sorry, mm -hmm. and that yeah. really slowed down the game. For them. And not only do they shut down the Riven by doing doing this swap, I think around like 10-15 minutes, but they also kind of slow down the game a bit and 
makes it so you all can scale up and use their picks like Kesselin and Twitch in the, in the mid and late game where they can just roll over the team fights. Because that is what the Unicorns of Love want, but C9 did put some pressure up against Exile in the mid lane, as all teams do. But uh, I believe you guys want to take a look at this because it's very much, it's a big investment <laughs> from C9 to get this kill. Oh man, I was laughing at this one. It wasn't first blood. Second here, blood. but the gank was just so early. He's level two <laughs> under his turret. How early can you gank and dive mid lane? Apparently, that's the earliest I've seen, and it uh, it could have set up the snowball. I think props to uh, C9 for executing it well. Like they pretty much played it as well as they could have. Um, yeah, it's some nice stuff. I like. Yeah, it. It, it reminds me of a certain uh, Brazilian. It also shows that <laughs> when Exile is playing some of his more comfortable champions like Kessadin, where he can chain Fiend as hard, uh, chain Fiend as hard. <laughs> then uh, it becomes better for him and the team. And even if they give up a couple of kills, I think Unicorns of Love showed in this one with the lane swap and with those kills stopped that they, they were thinking more on their feet. Something that I didn't see yesterday. Yes, yesterday, it just rolled over and died. But here, was that lane swap and that dive a very intelligent decision? Or, or was it more like, well, where can we go? Let's just go top. Well, I mean, like, C9 really had to, yeah, like, keep up the pressure this entire game. So anytime they didn't, like, that's when UOL could actually do things. And... We didn't talk much about that level one invade, but I think that was a pretty important one because it really says like, okay, now your bot lane is losing because the Braum dies level one, everyone gets like small XP, small gold, and then now you know exactly like, okay, now they're not going to be ganking bot or anything like this because the lanes are going to be terrible. And it really gave like UOL just time to like think and then play. And I think C9 was drafting to like continually make plays, but it yeah, seemed hard. That's what it felt like. I mean, your wave clear point, I think, is a pretty strong one. On top of when their bottom lane doesn't create that huge pressure, it's harder for them to snubble in the rest of the map. And every time C9 had a misstep, like when Contracts dove the mid lane and gave a kill back, or when they did have Ray die and lose the turret, if the gold is even at 16 minutes into this game, C9's in a really bad spot, really bad. And they were in that situation here, so it ended up being a pretty quick game. That they were, and Unicorns of Love, the minute they got a couple of kills, they got more of them. And in the end, they rotated top lane, got a couple of kills, and then got Baron, even though it was a bit messy around the Baron, but they got it in the end. And Trashy, this is the Unicorns of Love you know and love. I don't know if I love them, <laughs> necessarily. Um, you can't but stop talking we, about them. We yeah. definitely <laughs> see, like, when UL gets a lead and when, when they are in the, driving, in the driving seat to force fights, then they're super strong. And th they showed that in this game with how, how fast they close out getting the Baron uh, after, uh, after these kills and then uh, just rolling over C9. Yeah, but even just looking at the setup to this play, they sent five people top lane. But where are the C9 waves on the minimap? 20 seconds later, they're getting them to the turret. And then UOL does play these situations pretty well because yeah. they force them so often. They're not very normal situations where a team so violently forces Baron 20 minutes into the game, but UOL is good at it. Where does that leave us on the count of uh, C9? I had a pretty good impression of them yesterday because that game versus G2 in the end was also pretty one if they had lost it off. It kind of doesn't really gain us anything, anything. in terms of who, yeah. who is the better region or who is... Well, not, or, definitely not that. Not yet. <laughs> no. But, I mean, it's a good start for EU. We, I know the Fischl said yesterday was his warm-up for EU, so now mm -hmm. we're actually... EU is showing what they got here, so... Yeah. I think uh, it's uh, it's time for the, for the EU teams yeah. to uh, win got. some games. Yeah, I, I think for C9 as well, it, it's a continuation of some inconsistency. Their early game was so great against Fnatic when they smashed Caps in the mid lane. They tried to do the same thing here, weren't as successful, weren't as clean. And then the G2 game, I don't think we, we don't have enough time to talk about the G2 <laughs> no, game. Yeah. So they've been all over the map, and I think that's the nature of this kind of rapid fire tournament format. I also feel like C9, when they have shown great strengths in the, in the NA region and also in the first day was through like mid-game decisions where they had strong picks for forcing fights, team fights mm -hmm. and such on. And I didn't f feel like this draft was necessarily playing to their strengths as a team. No such plan for C9 today, but the Unicorns of Love take away win. And after the break, Phoenix won face off against the European champions G2. Stick around. <laughs>